Welcome back, James Kindline Forge again. Uh, today I'm going to make a blacksmith's guillotine. And one of the books I was reading, The Backyard Blacksmith by Lorelai Sims, she makes a guillotine in there that I thought in particular was really cool. I thought the dies for it were very easily interchangeable. I liked it. Um, I've been looking for a good design for a guillotine that I wanted to try to make. And I like that, so I'm going to go with what she's done in her book, but I think I'm going to change a little bit about it. All right, here's what you're going to need for this. I got some half-inch plate, cut one piece of it, cut four inches wide, seven inches long. That's going to be your base plate. Another piece, four inches wide, five inches long. It's going to be your top plate, or top die. Another piece of it, two inches wide by four inches for your bottom die. Four of these, angle iron. You can use whatever size you want. I suggest at least quarter inch, so mine's quarter by inch and a half. Four of those at seven inches. Nice piece of round stock. This is, let's see. This is five eighths round. Um, preferably use some kind of carbon steel. This is 1045. Um, I'm going to cut this down into two and a quarter to two and a half inch pieces. This is a top plate. It's just two by three. This is going to go on top of your top die for you to strike with your hammer. Step here is going to be to get these welded in place. So we're going to put our magnet on this. We're going to slide it down. Make sure we're good and flush. That's our center line. I'm going to put these things three inches apart because most of my hammers and a lot of the bigger stock I use is two to two and a half. So I need it big enough for me to be able to get it in there. So if I go any bigger than three, then <clears throat> I won't have much for my dies to sit in. So I'm going to go right at three inches here. We'll tack this inside the back part here. Don't tack it in there just yet. You want to make sure everything gets nice and squared up. So tack this back here, and we're going to continue going around do all four of them like that, or these two. Then I'll show you how we do the other two for the other side. Alright, so now that you got that in there, you want to take a piece of your plate, the, the width of your die obviously, put it in there, then put this piece up beside it, a little bit of play is okay, you don't, you'd rather have a little play in it than none at all, and it gets stuck. You have to slide your plates in and out of there pretty easily. Yep. Now it's just a matter of welding these off. Okay. okay I'm gonna get them welded. So I got my round stock, my half inch stock cut down to two and seven eighths inch. Just so if it's just inside these lines here, that's that's uh, our frame. <clears throat> took and ground a flat spot on it so it sits on here nice and flat now what we're going to have to do we're going to weld it down both sides of this and the same with our top four our top die I have it marked out I have another piece I'm going to put it in the vise and we're going to weld it to that as well sits right on there just like it's supposed to Next, we're going to weld our uh, our little tabs on here, so this thing stays in in place. The bottom one's not so much to worry about; it can't rock it sitting flat. The top one's the one that needs that, so it doesn't do this on us. Okay, you know what I'm so we're going to put these tabs on here like such just inside here so it can wiggle but it's always going to go back to center you see put that tab in there we're going to put two on each side one top and bottom just to keep this thing stable and then our striker plate on top okay see how that let me back you up so i don't think you can see the striker plate there we go striker plate on top just like that we got the frame mounted upside down here in the vise uh, of course you got to put a hardy post on this thing if you want it stationary on your anvil 
got some one inch solid. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna offset mine because I want the mass of this, or the center of this more towards the center mass of my anvil. So I'm gonna put mine on this side here in hopes that I get it closer to the center of my anvil. You see what I did there? Just got a nice heavy chamfer on that. That way I can fill that weld in because I don't want to come out past this too far because my hardy hole is an inch but it's a little worn on the top so I have a little bit of room right here for my weld but not a lot so I want most of my weld up inside there so I can kind of grind that clean so it'll sit down in there nice and flat. She's built. We got her put together. Interchangeable top die. Like I said, you can change whatever size your fuller and die or shape, whatever you want to put on the end of these, you can make them and then just drop it in there. So you'll have several of these laying around. Interchangeable bottom die as well. That goes in there. Got the post on there for the hardy. All four legs are welded securely. Um, we're going to fire the forge up and we're going to demonstrate how this thing works. Out here in the anvil, see how, that's why I positioned it this way so it brings it more over the center mass of my anvil instead of over the tail of it. Uh, so right now, just going to give you a quick demonstration. Put this in here, say you want to do a fuller, an even fuller on both sides, you just put it in there. One smack. See what that did? Fuller on both sides. Now. Do a, do a couple hits to do how far it'll bring it. See that? Perfect. Beautiful. That right there, folks, is how a guillotine works. All right, folks, there it is. Blacksmith's guillotine. Welder, some steel, some time. Very handy tool. Must have for a blessing, especially if you don't have a help. Uh, if you have any ideas of how I could improve this thing, please don't hesitate to leave a comment and let me know. I'm always willing to learn something new. Uh, if it helps you at all, uh, that's awesome. I'm happy to hear that. And let me know. If you liked it, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. There's always more to come. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.